Hello, it's Pastor Chris here from St. Andrew, here to talk about worship and in particular the sermon for the week. We have been in the month of July reflecting on the book of Ezekiel in the Hebrew Scriptures. And this is the final sermon in this three-week series. And we looked at chapter 1 two weeks ago. We looked at chapter 18 last week. And this week we're looking at chapter 37. And this would be, to me, really kind of the one of the most important chapters we find in Ezekiel. And all of Ezekiel 37 is probably the most crucial chapter. And the one line that I love in this chapter, more than any other line in the chapter, is when, is when a voice speaks to Ezekiel and says, ask the question, can these bones live? And Ezekiel had been transported to this valley, a valley just filled with these dry, brittle bones. It looked like the valley of death. It looked like it was a wasteland, like this was some battle that happened long, long ago. And it's coming to see some historical site. It's like a land of the land of the forgotten almost. And this voice, almost like the voice of God speaks to Ezekiel, says, Do you think these bones can live? If it was me answering that question, goes, there's no way there's any life left where I'm standing. But Ezekiel has the smartest answer. You know, like sometimes they're like, man, that was, I don't need to remember that answer. Ezekiel's response was, only you know. And that's when uh, God and the voice that is speaking says, I'm going to breathe life into these bones. And the breath covers over this valley and these bones begin to reassemble and sinews and flesh get attached and bodies start forming. It's, it's the craziest kind of imagery you can find. But the idea is that when, you're, when you think your future is over, when you kind of feel like your future has been cut off, you feel like you're that valley of dry bones. There is like, there's no hope for me. There is nothing possible left that we have to hope for in the future. And this chapter is a reminder to God's people that with God's help and God's holy breath, uh, the, the Hebrew Bible for breath is ruha. It's like this breath that kind of sweeps over the valley. It's almost like you could see this fog kind of drift over the valley and this fog that drifts over the valley as it covers the bones, it brings things back to life. Is that God still believes in the people when the people no longer believe in themselves. And I think that's the most critical message we get out of chapter 37, is that when I have to rely just on myself and I think, can I do this or not? We have that little voice inside that you can't do that, Chris, you're not capable of that. People will discourage you, they'll, they'll make fun of you, they'll do whatever, but if I have another voice saying, don't listen to that voice, listen to my voice. Your future is a phenomenal future if you dare just believe it yourself. Sometimes we need that outside voice to remind us to cancel out the interior world of what we're thinking. And that's the voice that God's people needed. They needed this outside voice to remind them that someone else believed in their potential and their capabilities in the world. And so when we think hope is lost, there is another that thinks the opposite of that, that believes in the hope of what you and I can maybe accomplish together, which we didn't think was possible on the outset. The whole book is based on the idea of hope, uh, people that were cast out in exile, thinking as though our life is over. And Ezekiel is there as a prophet. You know, oftentimes prophets are there to say, you did something wrong, you gotta correct it. In this case, the prophet Ezekiel came to God's people to say, don't give up. God's not given up and you given up on you and you need to believe in the hope that God has in you. And I find that a tremendous message that we need to take carry with us today. Um, there's so much that pulls us down, so much that that separates us, but there's so much more that you can unite us and pull us together and we have yet to to see the potential of what we can do in the world in which we live. So I hope you join us for this final sermon of Ezekiel chapter 37 as we dip into the valley of dry bones. But maybe by the end, that valley won't be dry anymore. Let's just hope so. See you on Sunday.